Hello everyone, welcome back to the table. We are continuing on my journey into Napoleonics with ESR and what we're going to take a look at is the complete player's guide. There is also a player's guide if you just want the rules, which I think if you were just getting in here, uh, that might be a good place to start. The complete, complete, the complete player's guide is actually going to have some additional content for you. You know, if this is definitely the rabbit hole you want to get into. So for well, here's the sticker. I just love the sticker, so I just stick that on all these unboxings. All right, so here it is, ESR at Sans Resultat. I'm hoping, give me a few months, and I'll know how to pronounce that properly. But this is the um, rule set that I am going with because I'll probably repeat this over the next few videos because one. ESR is so far the wargaming company. They they've put out a one-stop shop that I fully respect. If you are new, new to Napoleonics like I am, I think it's been a fantastic experience because it provides not only a place where the rules are are so you can get your rules, you can get campaign guides, but they also sell the miniatures in support of the rules. So the my experience when I was initially looking into Napoleonics is well I got to find rules. Then I have to figure out what scale, then I have to figure out what manufacturing company. Luckily, it doesn't matter, you can mix them, but there are so many companies that sell, you know, different quality levels. Just, there's a lot to it. But the Wargaming Company, I think, did fantastic because they've put it all together for you. So you just go pick out your rules, find some armies you're interested in, and go from there. And I also love spiral binding books for wargaming even for like some of my board war games I like having spiral binding I don't feel like I'm laying it flat and then ruining the binding and pages slipping out so this is super super quality and I like kind of this cover it's kind of flip cover to it covers the binding there and the front oh it's just classy like they put a lot of good thought into this um, I have nothing but good things to say, honestly. It's going to be, maybe over time, I can find things that I could complain about. But as a new player and a new to uh, ESR, getting my own book and stuff, this has been, this is top notch. Now, here comes the disclaimer. I'll put it at the beginning here. This was sent to me by the Wargaming Company for the purposes of review and I want to do some playthroughs later because mostly I want to chart my journey into Napoleonics and ESR is where I'm going. And so far, I mean, it's fantastic. It's been a great experience. Table of contents, here's the introduction to the system. And I believe this is just coming off of the skimming websites and trying to gather information. This is a second edition of the rules and I think they're on the fifth printing and I remember reading somewhere that yes there it is note regarding the fifth printing so this is the fifth printing of the second edition rules and my understanding is as they do each printing they try to you know include errata items and things like that so as of this video fifth edition should be the most current rule set um, what I liked here this is another big thing that was with getting into the Napoleonics is the bases, the base sizes. So you got your figure size and the bases. So this is going by the yard scale. Um, basically, I would say maybe the 200 yard would be good for six millimeter, 150 yard scale, which is what ESR is. That's for like the 10 mil. You could probably even do a hundred yard, but the 100 to 75 yard is as you start to creep up to say maybe the 20 mil range. And then 50 yard if you're using, uh, you know, maybe like the 28 millimeter figure stuff, you know, like for black powder and whatnot. So they have in here ideas and suggestions for your base sizes for maybe figures that you already have. And what's cool is the quick reference sheets that you can get off their website can then hone into this scale. So a lot of the, the things as I've been reading, the the rules will reference things like yards away. You gotta be 225 yards away, 450 yards away, 900 yards away. And if you're playing in 200 yard scale or 150 yard scale, the quick reference sheets that you can download convert all that to inches for you. So again, pretty convenient. 
but a lot of information here to help you get started either rebasing or as a first time player like myself, all the bases are included in the miniature box, so I just stick stuff together and I'm good. So this is great. So you got your introduction to the rule sets. Uh, I was talking about some of the highlights in the rules. Consolidated list of clarifications to the canon rules. Fantastic. Then you get into the player's guide. And again, just the rules. So you could buy a separate book of just the rules. And pricing I didn't memorize. But turn sequence, what I like is the rules do a good job of following the turn sequence of the player aid charts. And then everything's color coded. So as you get started in the reading, you set up your game, then it starts to follow the turn sequence here, discusses the turn sequence. And then as you just go through this example, boom, you hit the rules and it follows the color coding of the quick reference. So command phase, movement phase, artillery and skirmish phase, combat phase. And then each section of the rules is color coded to match that what you're reading. And as you read the rules, I love, this is another thing too, one, I like the layout, the way that the, this bit feels more like a review than an unboxing, sorry, but really, I haven't learned the game enough to make this a full review, but I'm just sharing with you my insights into the book here as a learning the game and why this has actually been pretty good. Uh, the difficulty is remembering everything. Most, all your answers are in here. It's just going to take some experience to have it all fit together. But what I like when I was reading it was, one, is written in a very casual manner. And when I say casual is I've gotten, I had some other games that a friend of mine has, and they're written very like in a technical manner where they're like three columns of really fine print. And it's, you know, section, it's like, you know, three, six, three, six, one, but it's like section 3.5151, you know, like very specific subsections and headings. And it's a chore to read. This, on the other hand, it's written out like in paragraph format. It's very easy to read and understand. And I like the call-out bubbles on the side. A lot of these call-out bubbles include optional rules. And I like that too. So other games I've played, you read through the main rules and then near the back, there'll be a whole section for advanced or a whole section for optional. And it just you know goes on and on. But here... Pretty much the whole game and everything you need is laid out in these pages. And then on these little side bubbles is either rules clarifications or optional rules. So as you go, you can look and go, oh, that's a pretty cool optional rule. Maybe we'll add that in. But there's no basic rules, advanced rules, optional rules. This is the rule book. And it works great. So very easy to read. And... There is a glossary at the end, which makes it very helpful to come back and find things. And like the glossary, it's an it's a index slash glossary. So as it explains a term, it then also gives you the page reference to come back to. So finding information later on has been very easy as well. The problem is my interpretation of the rules and remembering some details. But again, easy to read, still color-coded. It gives good examples here, like the leader actions. There's a lot of leader actions you can do, and then they're all kind of detailed throughout. Again, optional rules, notes. It's great. <clears throat> great. Lots of diagrams. I was trying to think of the word. I got a cough now. It's not COVID. <coughs> I talk too much. Let me get a little drink. Today, we have some Diet A&W root beer. That is what we're drinking today. What are you drinking? Yeah, I love watching videos where people share what they're drinking. I'm like one of the only ones that really drinks. I don't drink alcohol. So <laughs> I'll see people that, here's the beer I got today. Sorry. They themed the beer to the game. I'm hoping they had root beer in the Napoleonic Sage. And if it was, I'm sure the emperor had Diet A&W. And no, I'm not endorsed or supported by them. I'm just saying that's what I've got. And I'm sure that's what the emperor drank. All right, so here's, again, diagrams that explain things. You know, it's typical. I'm going to say that's nothing unique, right? Like, you might say to yourself, well, Eddie, what screams to you that makes this unique? Well, they have that, but, you know, this is not unique to them. But it's nice that the examples are here for you. 
And this, though, I think is unique to the rule sets. They have full page examples. So what you do is you can read through the rule part, and then you come back here, and it does an example on specific actions that you read. So for example here, example. For example, in the command phase, the example is activating a pending force order objective. You read through it a little bit. Here's a little side note. Some of this is, I think, kind of cool, like, you know, the reasoning behind. And then it's got the, um, the situation. And it then clearly states out the bonuses. So, Because a lot of these things, it all powers on this one chart. I'll show you this chart in a minute. It's great. But you'll have, like, all these potential modifiers. Well, the example does a very good job of showing you which modifier is in question and if it applies or not. And then if you're curious about the modifier, um, I think that might be the one thing was I didn't find a lot of examples, like explanations of those modifiers, but they're not hard to figure out. You just read, do they have superior vantage point? Oh, what is superior vantage point? Check this out. I'm going to use my glossary for a moment. Raising an army. Hold on. Where's my glossary? Here it is. Glossary. Superior vantage point. Well, never mind. Okay, so if I was going to have one thing. They didn't put superior vantage point for me. Gosh, now I gotta start the whole video over. Okay, let me see if superior vantage point is in here. Oh, you failed me. Okay, hold on. We'll get it there. Attack, defend, support. Okay, where's my activation? Oh, man. Okay, so most things are in the glossary and the index, and then you can read it, and then it will send you back. Man, now I feel like a complete goof. Superior vantage point. I'm gonna have to go back now and find that. Specifically, what is the superior vantage? Oh man. Now I had to pause the video and come back and find out specifically what that is. <sighs> statuses, statuses, attack, defense, support. Wrap. Okay. Well, there's the chart. All right then. Well, fine. David, we'll have to have a talk about that. Okay. So let's say though you weren't looking for a superior vantage point. We move on to movement then, and the same thing. I like that the optional rules are a little bullet point. You got the main rules themselves. Everything other than superior vantage point so far seems to be explained out really good. Again, we got our charts, diagrams, but it's coming right back here to full page examples. Here's the situation. Here's the rules in action. It's very cool. But oh, that was the point I was trying to make though, why I like that. It's uh, a lot of games I've seen, they have examples, but their examples aren't necessarily laid out as detailed as this or as many examples. So I think this does a really good job of helping you work through the rules. Then I like the, the artillery and skirmish phase. So you get a little bit of shooting, get your cannons shooting, and then the, the infantry go back and forth a little bit. And then uh, you do assessment. So I'm not going to do rules explaining, but I just have to say, I was very impressed. I will say this though for combat, for skirmish. This this is not what I thought it would be. This is actually much better. So uh, comparing with Napoleon's Battle. So I've played some Napoleon's Battle, some, a little bit. And when you, when you combat there, I liked the opposing dice rolls. So for example, the person who is attacking or the aggressor is going to add their modifiers. They roll a die 10, and then they add their modifiers to the die 10. And that's the result. And the highest number you can go to is a 10. So even if you had like a 12, it still counts as a 10. The opponent, defender, will roll, same thing. 
They'll see if there's any modifiers that support them. Generally, it's just a straight die roll for them, but you know there could be some modifiers for terrain or something like that. Usually, that goes against the attacker. But uh, basically, the defender will roll their die ten, and whoever gets the higher number wins. And then the difference between the two rolls, if the attacker is higher, that tells you possibly how many casualties you had. It's pretty simple. The thing, though, and where I think ESR is superior is the fact that that combat is actually kind of simultaneous. So what happens is, just a very broad overview, player A will add up all their modifiers, player B adds up their modifiers, you roll two dice six, you compare the results. And then the difference is applied on a chart. And what's cool is, you have for the winner, depending on what they won by, they could end up with some fatigue, or they'll stay in place, or they'll win and break through and push through. And then they have a spot for by how badly did the defender lose, and then there's some options there. So what is so cool is that you could win, but you could get a fatigue point. So it doesn't necessarily come out and say you've taken casualties. They, they work in terms of fatigue, you know, their, the, how, their morale overall, their will to keep fighting. So you could end up where the winner, you're just so flush with winning that you break through, you don't suffer any fatigue, your men are fighting. And then the defender might lose by 10 points and bad things could happen. You get a fatigue for that formation and you remove that unit. Right? That's, that's pretty big results. And that's to me that's cool. Because now, just like the opposed dice roll, both people are involved in the combat, but then the combat simultaneous. Because, you know, in my mind, the two units lining up, like if these were people, you know, this doesn't go, okay, I shoot. And this person says, oh, he's dead. Okay, now we return fire. It's... No, we're all shooting at the same time. And this kind of gives you those results. It's very cool. I like it. So their skirmishing is very, very cool. But here's your artillery and skirmish section. So we read up through that. And again, lots of examples. Lots of examples. Then you go to combat. And again, combat isn't too bad either. Combat is a little more involved. I wish I had, I should take the bases out of the miniature box. But again, just the basics of that. You have people lined up across from each other. And the same thing, take your modifiers, roll your two dice six, and determine who's the winner and loser of that particular combat. And the difference is like with skirmish, you, you resolve a skirmish, and then it's kind of done. But with the combat, combat actually, if you got two bases touching, they pretty much, you keep fighting until one side breaks away, or you know, uh, so you have separation of all the combat units. So you, when you have your forces lined up across from each other, you start on like one side, work your way across. So when this combat is done and resolved, and they've, maybe they've pushed back, and this person stayed put, but they pushed back, they're no longer touching, so you move to the next two touching units. So you just work your way down the line. And it makes for very, very interesting combats where if you get breakthroughs, then this person breaks through, maybe he hits a supporting line in the back, and then combat continues. So it, it's, it doesn't stop. Like, they will fight until nobody is touching, so it can be very deadly. Yes, but I liked it. I thought that was amazing. And then at the end, you do combat assessments to see overall what happens. Do you end up retreating, breaking, take more fatigue? What happens to you? Uh, does your leader die? So there's just a lot of cool things that happen. And again, lots of good combat phases and examples of the combat phase. And then the glossary and index, which does not include superior vantage point. <sighs> Is there a vantage point? Is there just a regular vantage point? Route T-U-V-W. No. No. Okay. I'm going to have to get on Facebook and ask what rule section covers what is superior vantage point. I was going to say, though, most of these modifiers make sense. They do. They, they don't need an explanation. Just that one I saw, superior vantage point. Let's see. Where is it? Either party per delay, per fatigue, every 12 inch. 
I don't even see it here. Where's the pure vantage point? I think that was on... Where was? Where did I see that superior vantage point? I saw that on something and now I don't see it here. Hmm. Maybe they don't have superior vantage point anymore. Well, where did I just see that to where I wanted to look that up? Now I don't see it. Okay, so I saw the verbiage superior vantage point somewhere, but now that I'm looking back, oh, there it is. Issuing commander has superior vantage point. I really wanted to know what that meant. So I don't see it in the glossary or the index. So I'll have to go on Facebook and see if they can point me to what rule section covers that. But here, other than that, okay, so that aside, this is something David also sent out and it kind of goes hand in hand with the rule book. You can get this off their site, it's about five bucks and I would say, I would, I would highly, highly recommend this. It is a tear resistant, kind of a spill resistant. I could dump my a and W on it and just wipe it off and it would still be playable, I think. I do not want to test that. But it feels like plastic, like a super thin plastic. This is this is the best player aid card I've ever gotten in a game, hands down. They're like five bucks. And I would say you can get it in the scale that you play in. So if you play in the 10 mil, 150 yard scale, then all of your measurements are calculated for you in inches. Plus then you have a nice, that's not attached to the back of your book. I mean, you could photocopy this or you can download. They have ones that you can download and print, but this is, this is awesome. I love this. Um, but it's got the phases, everything you need here. This is just an amazing piece of paper. So I would recommend that you get this thing. And it also does not tell me what superior vantage point is. Yep, that's gonna stay with me for a few videos until I figure out what that means. <sighs> All right, but there you go. So that is a, an overlook to the complete player's guide. And again, this is gonna be my handy dandy assistant into learning the game and ultimately playing the game with you all. And I would encourage you, if you are an ESR player, please leave your own comments, leave your thoughts. If you play a different game, cool, tell me about that too, right? Um, I still like to learn other rule sets, but for now, a lot of the videos that you see will probably be ESR related because that is, I, 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 uh, I think it's great. I played a little bit with my friend. It turns out that I have a friend that I play with and he, had, he has the rules. And I was like, oh, hey, let, let's play that. Will you help me learn? And he's like, well, yeah, I gotta learn that myself. And so we've played a little bit and it's been great. It, it is a fantastic system. And we had a lot of questions that come up. So if you go to the Facebook group for ESR and you'll see some of my questions look through Eddie Carlson and other people have questions too. But I've had very specific questions about things and David has been there on their answering and other community members and um, it has made things much more clear. So they have a great support community as well. So not only is it the rule book, but you don't ever have to feel like you're struggling to understand stuff. Like I'm going to go right back there and ask him what is superior vantage point and where can I find that reference? Um, and they will tell me like within minutes, I guarantee I don't think I, I've gone more than a few minutes before I've had a response. Obviously, time of day and things like that will help, but so far it's been fantastic. So if you're interested in a game that offers you everything to get started, I don't think you could go wrong with this. Again, you get your rules. They also sell the miniatures that are in the compatible scale that you need. So a lot of the guesswork is taken out. If you're already a veteran player, which turns out my friend is, He's played Napoleon's Battles, and his things are all based and scaled for Napoleon's Battles, but with a little bit of modification on his side, and then printing out the 75-yard scale, he's been able to use his miniatures, and boom, we were able to start playing a little bit of ESR. So this is a very versatile rule set. Highly, highly recommend it. And we'll leave it at that. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, you know, we'll see you on the flip side.